slimes are hard to farm, but you need those slime blocks because you want to make redstone contraptions and you need slime balls because you want sticky pistons. But how do you get these things? Well, I'm going to show you. Don't you go anywhere. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, depending on what time you're watching this next episode from me, Avamant, and today we are going to make a slime farm. Now, I don't know about you, but these slime farms where you have to dig down below level 40 and you have to take out half the world to be able to find a chunk that's got slimes in it, I find them a little bit difficult and very time consuming in survival. And especially when trying to find your slime chunks, which are really important there, it's actually very tricky. And I find it very difficult because things like slime, um, chunk base, etc., don't seem to be as reliable in 12.1 as they used to be in the earlier Minecraft versions. So I'm gonna do a survival friendly slime farm and we're going to do it in this swamp. Now swamps are funny old things and we're going to talk about why they're funny old things whilst we're doing it but um, let's just do it shall we? Let's crack on and uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. So for this build per pod you need three cactus, one sand, 24 hoppers, two chests, 24 bits of carpet I've chosen green, 36 slabs I've chosen stone brick, eight fences I've got oak, you need 16 stained glass and 16 stained glass panes. Again, I've gone for green just for consistency. You need four blocks of iron and a pumpkin. And then you also need a block that you can easily delete, easily mine out. So I've got white wall because that's really, really simple. Let's get on with it. First off, we want to find ourselves a nice open space within a swamp biome. Now slime spawn naturally below level 70 and above level, I think it's 50. I'll uh, make sure that the absolute correct details are in the description below. They spawn naturally in these biomes, especially when the moon is full. So we're going to do it here and we're going to clear out a little bit of space here to create our farm. So first things first, let's get this cleared. That is much better. I got room to see and room to breathe. Now let's get on with the building. First off, find the spot that you want your farm to be. And I'm going to come down right about here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create two farming points. I'm going to put one here and then I'm going to put another one 30 blocks away in that direction. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do you know how to count? 30. So we're going to put another one right there. So they are a fair old way apart. And we're going to get cactus and we're going to put a cactus on each of these. So three high cactus on there and also a three high cactus on there and then we're going to dig out all the way around here and we're going to dig it out too wide all the way um, now the reason for this i've seen a lot of mob spawners that actually don't do too wide they only do one wide but my experience is if you do one wide you find that slime balls often fall outside of that one wide area and then you don't collect them and they despawn and it reduces the efficiency of the farm and uh, that's just no good obviously so now get yourself a chest there and there and what you're going to do is you're going to point yourself into this chest with that hopper. And then we're going to get a load of other hoppers and we're going to make sure that they are pointed in towards that hopper in some way. And yep, this is quite a lot of iron, I appreciate, but these are slime balls we're talking about. They are worth it. They are worth the amount of iron it's going to take to build this farm because they are invaluable in your redstone builds. Can you imagine having a redstone build? without a sticky piston. It just doesn't bear thinking about it. You've got to have sticky pistons and you've got to have slime blocks. So this is the way to do it. So let's just get this done and then I'm going to do it on the other one as well. So two cactuses growing in the swamp, which in itself is a little bit weird, surrounded by two rows of hoppers pointing into a chest. That's where we are now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cover up these hoppers with carpet. Now the only reason I'm doing this is because I'm a little bit OCD and I don't like the fact that we've got hoppers showing. I'm just funny like that. And if you do carpet, Carpet will allow you to have stuff that falls onto it pass through it when it's on a hopper. So that's why we're covering up with carpet. And we're going with green because we're in a swamp and we've got a cactus next to it. So it's got to be green, isn't it? That's only right. Now we're going to work on this one in terms of the build itself. And we're going to put a stone brick slab, just one, on top of that cactus, just like that. And then we're going to surround that with um, more slabs just so we can build on top and then we're going to delete it. Now you could, of course, just put something in the middle here and build off of that, but I'm a rubbish driver, so I'm going to do it the easy way and just delete it. So you come around and build yourself a fence all the way around there and then come down and what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete 
all of these ones, but not the one in the middle. That one in the middle is going to stop things going horribly, horribly wrong. Then get yourself some stained glass. Again, I'm using green stained glass. Why am I using green stained glass? Because we're in a swamp. Of course I'm using green stained glass. And I'm going to build a row outside of the fences. Not on the fences, outside of the fences. All the way around. So it's kind of a five by five square. Exactly like that. Perfect. And then I'm going to get some panes some green stained glass panes and again this is just green because we're in a swamp it could be any color you want it doesn't have to be green whatsoever and then inside here we're going to spawn our iron golem so i do this by going one two and then up one and across and across and i've noticed we need to get rid of those glass panes otherwise it won't spawn my mistake didn't mean to get overly zealous and put those in and we also need to lose that iron block now so get rid of that and put that back in there and now we can put a pumpkin on its head and bang we've got one iron golem sat there ready to be our bait it's a little bit cruel really but that iron golem is bait now fill in these gaps here on both sides and then get yourself some stone brick slab again and we're going to cap off this build now we need to cap it off because there is a chance that skeletons can shoot arrows at it and eventually when a skeleton shoots that arrows at it it's gonna kill it it only takes off a little bit of health and iron golems are really hard aren't they i mean they're properly good um strong strapping children children don't know where i went with that but they're strong basically so they've got a lot of hearts which means it's going to take a lot of arrows to kill them but we want to minimize the risk to our poor trapped golems because they can't defend themselves so we're making as protected as it possibly can be by putting a roof on it and you know me i like to have a roof that at least looks half decent and there we go so there is our iron golem pod and then we're just going to duplicate that on the other side so that is two golem pods 30 blocks apart which i found it's pretty much the optimum space between because if a slime spawns in the middle of them it's just about right to go either way so any closer and really they're too close it makes no difference so 30 blocks apart is just about right to get the widest possible catching area for your slimes and obviously you can do more you could do 30 blocks in this direction and 30 blocks in this direction have a square you can do a grid 30 blocks uh, between all of them it's entirely up to you but the one thing we've got to be really careful of is the mob cap now the mob cap is something that's relatively new in minecraft and what it means is you can only have so many mobs in a particular area before there's no more room for mobs to basically spawn into and what you don't want to do you don't want to be limiting the space in which you can uh, get your your slimes you don't want um, slimes and goodness only knows what spawning miles away in the swamp because it contributes to the mob cap so what i like to do is to spot around um outside of the catching zone of your pods some light just light it up and now you can light it up any way you want but i thought let's make it light in a nice interesting way so this is what i decided to do so i have put a circle of light and torches around the area that we are going to be having our slime spawning now the reason i've done that and i'm in peaceful mode at the minute which is why there aren't any beasties but the reason i've done that is because we want to try and keep the number of mobs spawning down now you are not going to remove them completely that i absolutely guarantee you're not going to remove them completely and that is simply because there would be too much light and if you take all of the um the darkness away you're not going to have any sm um, the slime spawning as well so just kind of to reduce the chances of slimes spawning outside of your area we are just lighting it up a little bit to make it just a little bit more the odds being in our favor oh look i weren't in peaceful mode at all i was actually in um normal mode because what's happening here is the slimes are already having a go now you can notice also that we've got some skeletons having a pop at each other which is quite unusual has anybody ever seen skeletons having a go at each other before that was quite funny sometimes the skeletons do have a go at the golems as well and that's okay because the golems rarely get hit and then the skeletons rub up against the cactus as well and you end up being able to collect look this one's going to do it look he's having a go he rubs up against the cactus and you end up getting bones and uh, arrows and things like that as well on top of it so it's not just spawning those kind of mobs too so it's quite useful isn't it 
So now all we need to do is make sure we retire to between kind of 25 and 32 blocks away. The ideal distance is about 30 blocks because that way the slimes will spawn in but they won't randomly despawn. If you go over 32 blocks away, the slimes will despawn randomly. And if you go over 128 blocks away, the slimes will despawn immediately. So you want to be kind of around about 30 blocks to make sure that you are spawning. Okay, so let's just let these farms do a little bit of work, shall we? So we've let the farm run for three nights. And while we did, we created just a little hide. It's not really a house, it's more of a hide. It is 30 blocks away because it's at the fourth corner of this three-cornered square. Do you have a three-cornered square? That's terrible. It's the fourth corner of the square that is made up with these three pods. And on the top, I've just put a little kind of viewing area so as you can see the arena from the house should you not wish to sleep in the bed whilst you're doing it. But you could also sleep in the bed. That works absolutely fine too. But what I want to do now is have a look and see what three lots of knights have given us. So in here we have got... Wow, that's that's actually far more than I was expecting. Um, quite surprised by that. Let's get in here. Let's go to the next one. So slightly less in this one. And this last one. Again, we've got slightly less again, but that is fine. So let's just have a look and see what we have ended up. So three nights has given us. So three nights has given us 93 slime balls altogether, nine bones, seven arrows, six bits of string, and two lots of rotten flesh. I'm quite surprised by that. I guess the zombies had a little pop at the um, golems as well. I've not actually seen that before, but they must have a go at them too, which is great. You can see their spiders also having a go at the golems. So it's not going to give you loads and loads of drops for mobs, but for slime, that ain't too shabby. Three nights, we've had 93 um, slime balls over three nights. That's an average of 31 a night, and I've not had a full moon. Um, so that's... Not too shabby. I've also not had a new moon where you won't have any spawning at all. So that's three fairly decent nights, 31 slime blocks average per night. I think you've got to be happy with that because you've not had to dig, goodness only knows, how much stuff out of the ground and try and find your slime chunks. You've had to just build it in a swamp. One slime farm. So now you can get as many little slime balls as you want. We've averaged around about 30 per night, which isn't too bad. And of course, if you had more of these little pods all around the um the place then you can end up finding that you get even more and in the morning you just go around to the the uh chest and pull out your slime balls and whatever else you've gained and within the few nights i reckon you'll have plenty of slime balls for your contraptions not as big a yield as some of the digging into slime chunks sl uh, slime farms that i've seen in the past and have made myself but far far easier and way 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 more survival friendly i think if you have enjoyed this video please do remember to slap that like button all over the place it really wants to feel the click of your mouse and also if you haven't done it already you're very naughty but hit that subscribe button it'll be great to see you in my sub club and i look forward to seeing you in another video really soon you take it easy now bye